thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, I will be talking about repository rules and I want you to put yourself into the position of someone who is managing a huge Bazel code base. Um, but in addition to the actual source code, you also have to depend on a lot of external data that you want to download and make available during your build. So this could be machine learning data uh, or movie data or whatever else you need for, for building or for testing. And you want to make this data available, but you also uh, you don't know in advance if this data uh, is, is actually publicly accessible, maybe you need authentication, and you want to um, do this right, basically. So first, you might think this is uh, an okay solution. You just slap a general on it, uh, you call wget, you try to access a file uh, from a GCS bucket, you just supply the password, uh, but this is a horrible idea. Uh, so first of all, if you do this, Bazel doesn't know that this general accesses the internet. So if you try to vendor your files um, using the Bazel vendor command or the Bazel fetch command, these files will not be available offline. Uh, second of all, the password here is hard-coded, so uh, you probably don't want to do this. There's better ways. Um, and then also, uh, what you see here is you have no way of actually changing this URL dynamically if you need to. And also, it's quite inefficient. You cannot access uh, different caches in Bazel. And also, wget is, is not actually a declared dependency, so it might just not be available. So I think it's quite clear that, that this is not a good idea. So next, we will talk about uh, Bazel repositories. Um, when you first execute Bazel and you reference a local targets, something that starts with slash slash, uh, you, you expect it to point to your local code, uh, so not to anything external. And there are, there's the modular Bazel file and the workspace file uh, that, that helps you to get access to, to external resources. Uh, and there's three ways to do that. There is, uh, Bazel DEP, uh, where you can access uh, files from uh, Bazel registry like the BCR. Uh, that is not so interesting for me right now. There's also um, repository rules and module extensions. And module extensions actually just internally use repository rules, so the rest of my talk will just focus on that. Uh, so yeah, repository rules are the defined way how Bazel wants you to access the internet. And then whichever method you use, if you have a, a label that starts with an add and then it's something else, you always know that in reality Bazel does some kind of fetching and at the end uh, the files are just available inside the output base. So after you fetch a repository, you can, you can actually inspect it and it's just uh, a directory just like your own source tree. And it also contains build files. So net, next, let's, let's talk about how repository rules actually work and why they're awesome and not scary. Um, they have a lot of capabilities. And the idea is that when you run a repository rule, it fills this directory uh, that I just showed you. And it can do so using uh, many different methods. It can download files from the internet. It can extract archives. Um, it can also read and write files, which is super awesome because you can, for example, read a log file and extract uh, expected hashes and URLs from it. Um, you can also run arbitrary unsandbox commands. And this is kind of scary, so you should use it with care, but it's super powerful. It means you can basically do anything. And yeah, uh, basically now I will try to convince you that this first thing of downloading files is really what you want to do and how to do it effectively. Uh, so this is how you would use a repository rule. You probably all know this one. Uh, it's the HTTP archive rule. And uh, you just give it uh, some attributes, some parameters to, to download an archive from the internet, extract it, and make it available to Bazel. 
Now let's look at how HTTP archive is implemented. Uh, you can see it has attributes just like a normal rule would. In this case, it has a URL, an expected hash, and uh, some other attributes that don't really matter right now. You also have a rule implementation, and um, this one also, at the first glance, looks just like a normal Bazel rule, with the difference that you have more cap or different capabilities. So in this case, you can see the HTTP archive rule uh, calls this method download and extract, and this is how it gets access to the internet. And then at the bottom, you can see that you make this available by calling repository rule and not rule. So this is how they are differentiated in Bazel. So next, let's talk about the Bazel downloader. I think it's an amazing piece of technology, and I will show you why. But first, I want to show you that Bazel also thinks that it's amazing. They wrote into their own documentation, this is the most amazing way to download files ever. It makes Bazel builds as reliable as Blaze builds in Google's internal hermetically sealed repository. It's not just reliable, it's also fast. So they end with your developer community is going to be happy, Mr. Jenkins will be happy too. Yeah, everyone will have a magnificent developer experience. <laughs> so uh, one nice thing is, so the Bazel downloader is hooked up to some native Bazel internals, but you can also call it from, from Starlark if you are in a repository rule or in a module extension. And you can either download files or you can download plus extract in one step. Next, let's talk about the repository cache. Um, it's a really useful but a bit confusing. Uh, the idea is that when you want to download files, you probably already know the hash of the file that you're downloading. And what you can do is basically say, is that file already downloaded before? Uh, you do this by looking into the repository cache, and if it's there, then you can just use it from there instead of accessing the internet. And internally, the repository cache just uses the hash, so it's a content addressable store. Uh, and it's also nice because it can be shared by multiple instances of Bazel, so if you have different projects that have the same dependencies, you can share them. Next, the remote downloader. This is a bit more niche. It's also experimental. Uh, but what it allows you to do is basically use some kind of proxy to download files. Uh, this uses gRPC under the hood. But the nice thing is it doesn't have to actually use networking at all. It can also just use a, a Unix domain socket. And basically, you, you forward your request to this remote asset service, and then it can handle it however it wants. So you could also have some system where you precede it, already have files available there, and then it's much faster than accessing the internet. Next, there is the Bazel Credential Helper. Uh, this was added by Angeflow. Uh, they did some really good work here. And the idea is that if you want to download files from uh, private repositories and you need credentials, you don't want to hard code them anywhere, and you just want Bazel to learn how to access them dynamically at runtime. And this works by using this flag and then, then specify a domain name or just use it for all of the domains or some kind of subdomain glob. And then Bazel will invoke the tool that you mentioned there, and it will just give the URL on the standard input. Uh, and then the tool provides headers uh, in the standard output. Next, there's the remote downloader config. And this allows you to rewrite URLs dynamically at runtime. Uh, it's super helpful. For example, you can uh, easily say that you only want to download files from Artifactory, and you want to rewrite certain URLs to point to somewhere else and then not allow anything else. So let's get to the end. Uh, I, I say you should always use re repository rules and module extensions as much as possible. Uh, use the Bazel downloader. It has nice features. Um, and also, take inspiration from rules GCS. It's something that Tweak recently open sourced uh, together with IMAX. Uh, they needed to access Google Cloud Storage. 
And this is what came out of it. Uh, yeah, it uses all of the ideas from, from this talk, basically. So yeah, thank you.